So these are some little coffee table or little table ends that I carved, I think in the winter time. Uh, I don't know if the camera's able to see over here. It's like probably 9.30 in the morning. Here's the chair with the seat on it. I did that off video the other day. I wasn't feeling too well, but I came and cut a slab up. I did that chair seat, this tabletop, and these two other tabletops too. From the cedar slabs that I got. And this... Over here. So there we go. I think I'll pull out the, uh, oh, this cedar is pretty wet. But I think I'll pull out the orbit sander and just kind of touch this up a bit. They're not perfectly sanded. I don't care. They're outdoor coffee table things. All right, so I don't know what I'm going to carve today. I don't know what I'm going to carve today, but I do know I'm going to get the orbit sounder out and uh, sound these up a bit. I got some sea tall. I'm going to sea tall this chair, this table, this, and this. So sea tall those four things. But uh, I don't know what I'm going to carve. I do know that I gotta rake up this sawdust in here and clean up inside here. It's never ending. You know, just once you get it clean, it's friggin' it's dirty again. I gotta finish this wood spirit and get a hold of the. Uh, Hopefully, I haven't heard from him. Hopefully, he still wants it with the butterflies. So, I'll get this wheelbarrow full of sawdust out of here and um, figure out. I'm going to carve one thing. Might, I might just carve a wood spirit today. Anyways, so these little tables, I think I'm going to, uh, because I can feel the edge of the cedar is so wet. I think I'm going to uh, put them outside in the sun. And all I did to uh, attach these tops, I just used some, uh, where's the glue? PL uh, premium glue. And I just glued it. I drilled some holes in the bottom of this. Okay, slow down, Jordy. I drilled some holes in the bottom of the slab. I squeezed the PL glue inside the holes, acting as dowels. And I also did that on this. I drilled holes about that deep into here on an angle. And I pumped the glue inside there. Then I put a bunch of glue on here. And then I made sure that the dowel holes, acting as homemade dowel, wood glue dowels, they all... That's what I did. I used premium PL glue and drilled holes. Oh, this one's heavy. You can see the glue's holding. It's been two days. So, yeah, there's those uh, out there uh, drawing. At the end of the day today, I'll put CETO on them. Seekin CETO. Now, what am I going to carve? I don't know. Like, I just don't know. You know, there's an old wood spirit. One of my first chainsaw, Judy and Scott's left. They moved out and uh, they got the key, gave the keys back to the farmer. But there's an old wood spirit. One of my first chainsaw carvings down there at the end of the driveway. I showed it leaning against the pole. But they're working down there. I don't know if you guys can see the white truck and stuff, but they're working down there. I don't want to go down there and get it. They'll be like, oh, what are you up to? I'm like, oh, I'm just grabbing this carving. Oh, are you a wood carver? 
No, actually, I'm just grabbing this because I ran out of firewood and I need to uh, get some more firewood. I'm cutting it up for firewood. Oh, that's a shame. Well, I don't know. I just don't really feel like talking to people today. So that's why I'm not going down there to get it. Just one of those days. And I don't know if any of you have noticed, this is the new, uh, this Burl family is the new mascot there. It's, it's going to stay there for a good year. And um, I don't know what I'm going to carve. I just don't know. Let's go inside the warehouse. See what's inside the warehouse. I don't even know if I'm going to carve anything, tell you the truth. There's your wizard, Robin. Um, this root head here is like, it's been around for too long. It kind of, it's taking up space. I don't know, I don't know if I can get in there to show you guys, but it's got a super long uh, root on it. It goes all the way out here. So maybe I should carve a couple wood spirits on this just to get it done. Because also another thing too, in this tent, in the Carving Fusion warehouse, it's the time of year where more spiders um, are starting to come in here. And well, more spiders are coming in. So maybe it's time to move her out. I don't know. Like, really, my plan to show up here today is basically just do the uh, sea to all the chairs. I was going to go beach combing and try and find a... I could carve a whale. Studio on the lake whale for his... Uh, ben Studio on the lake's having a whale challenge, a spirit whale, but... So, that's open to the general public. Yeah, I'm going to carve a couple wood spirits on this thing today. And just leave it outside. Fucking boss. Pardon my language. Okay. Okay, so sorry for that, uh, this microphone on. Sorry for that beam of light, uh, that you guys are seeing here. It's like a swoosh line. Hey, Ben. Studio on the lake. So, this leans pretty good here. This sticks out farther. You know, sometimes with these pieces, I get rebar about this big. I drill a hole in the bottom of the, the piece and bang the rebar into the ground. And put glue inside where I drill the hole in this log in the bottom of it. Then I put this on the rebar. I leave it sticking about that far out of the ground. But since we got it leaning against the wall here, there's lots of stuff you can do. You know, you can carve an eagle head up here too if you want. An eagle head. But I really don't. We got an orange uh, studio on the lake pen here because that's the color of the pen that I pulled out of my pocket. I'm not. I'm really not with it today, but it's okay. It's all right because really, like, uh, when are, when are any of us really with it? When are, when are any of us really with it? So and there's our center line. Might even do a couple on this. Uh, log. I think this might be birch or some kind of, um, not birch, but um, some kind of fruit wood. Might even be an alder too. But anyways. And I got to carry it back to the tent. I'll get the camera later. So I'm giving you guys the wide angle view right now. I think this whole video I have. You guys ever get slivers up your fingernails? 
yeah, it sucks when that happens. So this is going to be kind of like a balancing act, I think. So I got that on the angle. I'm going to put the screw in this way. Once I get this balancing, balancing act done. I might even cut this shorter after because this would be a nice piece um, to make it so an owl can perch up. Carve a little owl up here. Anyways. Carry on. So we'll balance this on our head. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. I might need another screw because it's kind of a... Uh, I got these longer four inch uh, deck screws. These ones are pretty good. So... There we go. Now we're ready to carve a wood spirit. So now I haven't had my break yet. Now I am going to have my break. And, um, well, I'm going to have my break. I'm just kidding. I don't really have breaks. So wood spirits can be any form that you want. They don't have to be a face. Um, lots of people try to make their wood spirits look like wizards. Wood spirit can be a green man. It can be anything you want it to be. There's no, there's no like, um, there's no rule for a wood spirit or any type of art. There's no rules. And if you, if you have rules, then I don't know. It just seems more complicated to have rules when it comes to art. I don't like to have rules. I don't even know what kind of face I I'm going to carve on this. But I know, I don't even know how hard this wood is. But I know I'm going to carve a, a longer face with a longer nose. And like I said uh, on lots of my other videos, the more you can get, once you get this, um, so there, there will be our forehead. So actually what, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut about, see this black line here? I'm going to cut about that deep in there. I'm going to be using my... Uh, battery saw my ms140 with the eight inch cannon bar on there we'll go over the battery saw in a minute and if all of you that are like oh no he's carving another wood spirit well then don't watch then don't watch that's just the bottom line this is for my um, normal subscribers and my friends out there in youtube world so what i'm going to do pretend this is my chainsaw bar is i'm going to carve deep in here about two inches deep then i'm going to we start removing this wood here, and I'm going to slope it back because, say, our eye line is going to be here, and our nose is going to be here. Look how long that nose is. But if I slope this back from this tip of this nose here, if I slope from here to here back this way, which is like, okay, so this way in. Which what would be like slope that way in that's how you can get your nose to stick furthest off the face But we're not really I Don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just I'm just gonna carve so here's uh, MSA 140 and Everybody yes, I am toning it down a bit this video. I just kind of this video is not really about um, Carving it's about finishing with the sea tall I do got the seat tall here. It's uh, this cost me. I got it on sale for eighty bucks. Seco Prolux. So there's they got, this is the natural color, but they have different grades like your first coat, your second, your third, or if you want to do a recoat every year. I think this one's the recoat, but I don't care. It's going to be my first coat, my second coat, and my third coat. <laughs> so let's start this. Uh, MSA 140, see it's a battery saw, 
Hi, Chris out there in the UK, in England. Not Chris Berenger, the other Chris. The one that did the bird houses. But hi, Chris Berenger, too. So this battery, it's fully charged. I got oil in here. It's good if you bring these, if you have this battery saw, Sophie, I think this is a shout out for you. If you have this battery saw it's, and you take it inside every night or you put it on a nice floor, it's good to empty the oil out of them when you're done carving for the day because these battery saws do uh, leak oil. Anyways. Make sure this is filming. I'm going to put the camera over here a bit so I never try not to stand in front of the camera. Sure, I might go. Still not sure what type of wood this is. It'll come to me. It might be birch because it's kind of uh, spalting a bit here. But let's uh, carve carve these sides the same. This is another Jordy Does video, obviously. I asked in my live video and I made a post. Should I do another Jordy Does videos? What do you guys think about them? And everybody was like, yeah, they're good. Keep doing them. Because if I wasn't doing Jordy Does videos right now, I probably wouldn't be doing videos. Well, I would, but I don't know. So, you can see here it's sloped back. I should slope it back. I don't, I'm not, my focus is not to try and get the nose to stick farthest off the face. Here. And you can see right down the middle, there's a crack. Right? See that crack? So, uh, I don't know how I'm going to avoid that not being on the nose. But let's do our eyes here. I could basically, this nose is going to be so long and so thin, I could basically just dry it on like a rectangle. Because I can always, it's always good to, to draw on the bridge of your nose thicker than it is thinner. Because it's always a lot easier. Remember this with the, for the very begin wood, beginning wood carvers? It's a lot easier to make the um, 
remove the wood, then add wood. So I haven't decided what if I want to give this guy a mustache or not yet. So maybe I can even make this one a wicked witch. But anyways, I'm going to sit down for a bit and kind of just relax. And then we'll start carving this face. Okay, also, we'll see how long that. I'm just going to do this real time. We'll see how long this battery lasts for this wood spirit here. Um, what I'm going to do now is do a little cut right here where the eyes are. This will be your eyebrows up here. Then I'm going to cut. I'm going to try and give, make this sucker so his nose pops really far off the, the piece. You see, when you're pushing, when you're pushing this chain, there's like going, using the bottom of the chain, there's no chance, well, less chance of kickback. But when you're pulling it like I did, there's a chance that th this chain might get caught on that eyebrow like this, and then boom, kick back. So you always got to try to remember that. So now I have more opportunity to make this no slope back. So we'll just do a cut like this. Okay, I'm not going to redraw the nose on, but I'm just going to pretend that imaginary line's there. So I'm going to go super deep right down in here, okay? Super deep. And you see how I didn't go straight in? I sloped my bar. Now i got to come to the other side. So I sloped it this way, so the nose is like that. Now I'm going to come to the other side. I'm not going to go straight in. I'm going to tilt it a bit this way. Okay. Now, let's remove some of this wood on either side. Now I can see this side of the face is smaller than this side. doesn't matter. It's a wood spirit. It can be whatever you want it to be. So you see I run into this situation where I can't get this piece of wood out. So I'm going to, where's my pen? I'm going to uh, go like this because this is, I still haven't decided if I want to give this guy a big happy bottom lip or a mustache. There's so many different ways you can do it. Okay, now I'll go there and remove this side. Okay, now I'm going to cut on the bottom of the side of the nose. Now I'm going to start removing the, the wood below the nose. Whoa. Looks like I need to get another screw. Stand by. Hit. So now I'm going to take this down towards the face. 
like um see this cut here So I'm going to bevel the nose a bit more. So there, now look how far that nose sticks off the face. So now what you do is you kind of stand back and you look at your piece, see what's going on. I can see that this side is running lower than this side so all you do is just when I do my faces I like to work on one side and then another side at the same time so your center line would be here so you got half and half so if I'm looking at this piece straight on I can see this side of the face is a little bit what this side is a little bit wider than this side. Good enough. So don't worry, we're gonna get this nose to stick off farther. So if I look at the piece, the cheekbones. Here's the nose, here's the cheekbones. They're almost, I could push these cheekbones down lower too. See that in your nose here? Here's your cheekbones. I can curve some of this off if I want, which um, I'll probably do. Okay, so now relax some more, take a look at your piece, see what's happening. Now you can see that nose sticks off even further. So now, you see the nose here, the eyebrows. If you want this nose to stick off even farther, let's try and give you a side view here. So you can see the eyebrows and the nose at the same time. Here's the eyebrow, here's the nose. So if you want the nose to stick off farther, just take some of these eyebrows back a little bit lower and recarve them in. Yeah, sometimes that means you need to recarve your forehead in too. Okay, so. We still need to take more of this down. Um, I don't know why, but this wood tastes like poison to me for some reason. I should be wearing a dusk mask. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the bottom part of my bar, my chain right here, and scoop these eyes out. Is this filming? Cutting the forehead back deeper. There's that. So, now if you look at the nose, boom, that's basically straight up and down. So the nose sticks further off the face now. Now, what do you want to do next? What do you want to do next? I see this guy's hair kind of like up here. One, whoosh, whoosh. Yeah, this uh, would taste like 
friggin' poison. Let's. I'm just gonna kind of do some crazy carving here. Um, bring in his cheekbones. I don't know. I'm just gonna carve so it um, it makes sense and everything. I'll do a time lapse. <laughs> Hi, Liz. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is uh, older. I don't know. Maybe some of you guys might be able to know. You can see those black lines in it. It's got the whiter grain. Tastes like poison. So, when I was doing my live chat last night, somebody said, somebody asked me a good question. They said, um, what do I do to motivate myself? How do, how do I motivate myself to carve if I'm stuck in a deep hole and I, I got the artist block? Well, I get it every day. But I always have plans the night before, but then my plans always change the next day. All, what I do to motivate myself is I just dig in and do it. I get shit done. When I, I'm practicing a different, longer face, more of a haunted kind of face this time. I'm practicing right now, and you guys are seeing me practice. I don't care if I, if I ruin it, if I F it up. I just do not care. It's a free piece of wood from the beach. All there is is some, some of my time. And how are you going to learn anything without practicing new things and screwing up? So that's what I do. I just get shit done. That, if that makes sense so I think like here I cut his bottom lip in I removed some of the wood below his bottom lip I left this in here because I'm going to try and give this guy some teeth we might even uh, see how what, wide, wide I made this mustache see how much wider this side is I can eat I can still even carve this away to give it like um let's see here the studio on the lake pen I can still carve some of this away here and kind of bring this up to give him some attitude on that side if I wanted to so but what I did what I got now is now you can see the nose from this side too now I got uh, my die grinder with the silver cut saw bit quarter inch I'm gonna run around clean it up I'll save these teeth um, I'll talk about the teeth, but I'll do a t another time lapse too. I think I am gonna kind of position this mustache different. I'm gonna because his lips slope that way. What way will I slope the mustache? Maybe I could slope the mustache that way too, or opposites. So like you know, maybe I could the the lip slope this way. Maybe I could take the mustache just this, this way. See if that works, right? Like just practicing. So I don't know if this wood tastes like poison or I made my coffee too strong this morning. So here you can see he's got the long face. He's got the bottom lip there. Let's see here. Well, there's Herman the farmer behind me. Just rolled in. Check up on his chickens. Bottom lip hanging down. I made it so up and down. I should have next time I'll do down and up practice so you think about his teeth the lips can go anywhere to where but the teeth are always straight right and you got the missing teeth like I got missing teeth so his teeth can be this guy's gonna have huge teeth and he's just gonna have two teeth two huge teeth there let me make sure they're straight So when you're doing this, it's really about um, getting an undercut underneath here to separate the teeth from the mustache and an undercut in this lip. Let me see if I can show you. Um, so like right in here, 
doing a deep cut inside there. So it looks like the lip is not riding up on the mustache. See that right there? That's what I'm talking about. Getting at the burr and cutting deep inside there to separate the teeth from riding up on this mustache. That's a thing, big thing about undercuts, right? See? See how these teeth kind of just ride up the must? I'm going to carve all this away. But you see how it rides up there? You want to cut deep inside. You want to cut deep in here. Separate these from that. So now what I got is, uh, and this is, everything's always my opinion. When I'm at my carving town, I run my Dremel 4300 without the flex shaft. Here's a Cutsole Extreme Taper Burr. Anybody wants to get these Cutsole Burrs, go to the description below. Take you to the Cutsole site. Use code C-Fusion. You save yourself 5%. So I'm going to use this Extreme Taper Burr to do those deep cuts. And I'll just do real time. Well, it might be hard to see. Real time, let's see here. Me, 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 me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I better do this off uh, camera. But see this bottom lip here? I separate, I got to separate it from the mustache. Okay, so there you go. See, you can see the undercut there. And on the lip, separating the lip from the mustache. Come over here. Separating it from the mustache, deep cut separating it in the mustache because when you look straight on, they're not attached and you're going to get shadows. I could curve a bit more of that out. I think I'm going to do that right now. And that's how I do teeth, anyways. And then you could also do an undercut up underneath the teeth, but we'll spray paint. Um, see that cut there? Is that a cut? We're going straight on. Look at that right there where it bends. See that little piece on there on the left? Got to remove that. Okay, let's give this guy a just card Rob side view. Now, see another thing too, your wood spirits don't have to have beards. You don't know, if you, if you curve your mustache out to the side of the wood like this, you don't have to do beard. You don't have to. So, the eyes. I'm going to draw the eyes on. I'm not, this is not an eye tutorial, but um, I'll just say this is what I'm doing. You got, you got that bump there for your cheekbone underneath it. Try and do them the same size. That's why it's important when it comes to eyes to make your faces the same size this way and the same length from the cheekbones this way too. Because if they're not, you can draw your eyes on really wrong. And then this part, this section here might seem bigger. Like, pretend if this side of this face was wider than this side. When you draw this eye on, you're going to have that much more on the side. And that should be really thin here because that's where your temple is, right? This will be thick. Then this part will be thin. So it's always good to try and make both sides of the face equal when you're working on the piece before you try and get into the eyes. I'm not a very good eye carver. I'll be the first to admit it. But I just get shit done. I'll try and carve these eyes. If they don't work, I'll hold them out. I just don't care.
I believe this is a holly tree. Got the little flowers uh, blooming on there right now. Um, in another month or so, I think the berries, no, that's in the fall, that's the springtime, the berries, or the fall time, the berries go there. The birds eat the berries that this tree makes, and they shit all over my car, the forerunner truck. So there's those ready to go, chairs ready to go. This guy's done. I don't know who will ever buy this guy, but just be practicing, having a good time. And like I said, if your eyeballs don't work out, carve them out, paint them. So I painted in there black. I painted inside there black and him with the teeth too. So I don't know where I'm going to put this guy. So I carved it because I wanted it out of the way, but now it's, I got to take it off this thing, put it back in the way somewhere. And, um, And, um, yeah, I got to take it out of here and then bring those tables in and spray them with the um, CETOL. Yep. There. Found a perfect spot for it, out of the way. Now, I gotta rake up some more and get these things in here to spray. I forgot I gotta sand them first. Okay, so even though the compressor's running, I figure I'll use my uh, jack lift for the chair because that's the most important. So we'll do that here. There's still, even though that video that I did with all the slabs, there was still a lot of behind the scenes stuff that went on that I had to do. You know, this um, CETOL, it likes the sun. It lo loves the baking sun, but I don't want to spray them out here because the trees and the birds shitting and the flies flying and the bees buzzing. Get some bee shit on here. So I think it's just best to do it in here. And then I'll leave the tent uh, kind of open so the wind can kind of... Like... I've never experienced this stuff bubbling like the spar earthing does. So I have no choice, but I gotta lift this up here. What's that seat fall off? No, oh, I know that seat's on there good. Oh. So that's good. So I'll bring the other table. Fucking, fucking, fuck. Okay, so I laid a slab down there, put a tarp on the slab for all the complainers. They say, no, you shouldn't fucking put the fucking thing on the thing so you'll get the slab all sticky with the seat all. So, and then here's the chair on the jack lift with the garbage bag on there so you don't get the thing on the thing with the seat all. So now I got to, uh, here folks, let's step on over to the work table and talk about this freshly can of CETOL. Okay, so here it is. Seco Prolux SRD Rewood Finish. Natural. Now they don't call it CETOL anymore. It's the same formula with a new name. Okay, same formula, new name. So it's Seekins Prolux. That's what it's called now. Prolux, I guess. It used to be um, it used to be called Seekins Cetol. When I bought this, I asked them to uh, put it on their paint mixing machine. 
which was yesterday or the day before. And they're like, oh, sorry, sir, we can't do that because it, um, and I says, oh, why is that? They said, because it creates bubbles in the finish. And I said, well, do you want to sell me the can? And they're like, yeah. And I said, well, then can you please shake it? Because I don't care about the bubbles. Where's my stirring stick? Oh, great. Anyways, I'm putting on my Dr. Liz gloves. I know her and her um, boyfriend, Bob, like to uh, play doctor. So that's why I call these Dr. Liz gloves. Just kidding. Hi, Liz. Anyways, I need to find a stir stick. So, yeah, like this color, they say this is the natural color. Well, look, even after they stirred it, there's stuff still on the bottom. So, piss me off. But they say this is natural. Well, it's not natural. Any color tall. it's a rich color. But in my honest opinion, my opinion, Cetol, well, the Seekins Seekins Prolux, it's called now, is the best stuff for outdoors. It lasts the longest. My first chair that I carved, when well, actually when I first started chainsaw carving, was an eagle head throne chair. I put three coats. There's the cow kids. I put three coats of uh, CETOL on it. It lasted about five years before it um, started cracking. Actually, this chair, this fisherman's chair that I carved, is going where that um, eagle head chair is. Tyler bought it off me. Tyler that's buying this, um, this uh, friggin' salmon chair for his buddy. He bought it for uh, Walter for his birthday. Tyler's a very generous person, and... Um, he's he's a lot he's a lot like me. You know, it just goes to show you, good friends since kindergarten. Like we don't talk every day, but he has been in contact with me after he's watched my YouTube videos and stuff like that. So I don't know. I think that's good enough. So I spray it on. This is you gotta. So here is uh, the sprayer. I think it would be called a, uh, normally a critter. But what's this one? D-Y-N-A-S-T-U-S. Pure Monarch Siphon, Siphon Feed Spray Gun. Siphon Feed. So that means the stuff comes out. This sucks this pipe where the stuff comes up. And it comes right out this tip. And this pushes the air out so there's no needles inside this that you need to clean if that makes any sense to you now one thing that i'm terrible at terrible and terrible and terrible at doing is pouring the stuff in there when the can's full because it always seems to go down the can you know i really should get a grinder and grind that and bend it out or something but i don't know like that, see it? Piece of shit. So, anyways, told ya. <laughs> no, you're ours, people. No, you're ours. So, yeah, I put these Dr. Liz gloves on because, well, getting this shit on your hands really sucks. Now i got to make sure that guy doesn't close the gate because I'm not going to be here for much longer. I'm going beach combing. Good. Truck truck just left. So, you have to... I, this is an air gun. Obviously. I've already turned my air down. So, before I hook this up, because when you get this thing hooked up to here, this thing will want to fall over, I'm going to put my dust mask on. So, once my dust mask is on, I'm not going to be talking. And here's my dust mask. So, okay, but dust mask on, can you still hear me? So, put your hat back on, Jordy. Put it on. 
Okay, so everything's sprayed up. I'll show you guys in a minute. In a minute, everything's sprayed up. I got this cleaned out. I used mineral spirits. I got my cam back on. I got my thing back on. So now it's time to get out of here and let this stuff cure. Let it do its thing. Don't create dust. That's what I keep telling myself. Don't create dust. So let me lock everything up and um, let's get out of here. Okay, so they're all done. This seat part I have to wipe it out of here and um, I had to wipe it out because it was it, it goes back in there so that's that see so you got a little knot here I don't know if you guys can see but there's a little you guys can't really see I also carved this Walter Bujo I don't know how well you're gonna see the salmon on the back but here's those tables you know, I'm only giving this stuff one coat. I don't know. I might come back tomorrow and actually give it another coat. Give them two coats. Because, well, they'll last longer outdoors, right? But there you can see the rich color that the sea tall does. So anyways, I'm going to I'm gonna lock up here and uh, go to the beach. Go beach coming. Hope my microphone works. <laughs> Bye. So, here I am once again. Here I am once again. There's not much new uh, driftwood on the beach, but um, I'm looking for something specific. Actually, well, I don't even know what I'm looking for. It's kind of funny. Um, I think it was last night I was having a live chat for uh, questions and answers. And uh, Ben's studio on the lake popped in. Then he started talking about his challenge that he's, uh, a challenge that he's having. That's a neat piece. Talking about a challenge that he's having is the spirit whale challenge. Spirit of the whale. So I don't think he has the official video out yet. But uh, I knew that my, uh, I was just talking to my good buddy, Just Carve Rob, was sitting in a Walmart parking lot. Um, his wife goes shopping, he drives her. So he sits out there and waits. And when we're talking about the spirit whale challenge Ben's having, Just Carve Rob happens to use my own words. He uses Jordy's words. And he says, you won't believe what he says. He says, I'm coming for you, Jordy. I'm coming for you. Well, Rob. Well, Rob. Just carve, Rob. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. One thing I do see is a little wave. They're coming out of nowhere. Now you guys can't see it. I know that. But it's just a little tiny wave that went down there. It just came out of nowhere. It's like a little friggin' typhoon wave or something. Anyways. Tide's going out. It's beautiful here. It's not too hot. It's like probably one in the afternoon. 
that's not even that wave's not even moving it's just sitting there but you guys probably don't even see it so it's just the tide it's just tidal waters that's all it is I'm losing my mind so let's get searching here i'm looking for the dirty pigs the dirty pigs i love to catch these dirty pigs a lot of broken glass in there pop balls and their sweaters had a campfire so I'm not going to start carving my uh, spirit wheel until good old Benny boy makes his official video of the spirit wheel because he might have rules and stuff like that. I know when I do the challenges, I have rules. And another thing, too, is the friggin' group on Facebook, Carving Fusion World of Wood Carvers, original, that group, the admins are having a challenge, too. So there's two challenges, there's going to be two challenges. I think they're releasing, I think they're releasing their official challenge this weekend. Here's a long pecker pole. Douglas fir if you need to make some fence boards, some fence posts. It's like a teeter-totter. Anyways. See what this beach has to offer. Doesn't look like too much, really, besides burnt out beer cans and dirty pigs. The dirty pigs. Let me make sure my uh, microphone's working here. And, uh, still coming for me, just carve, Rob? You sure about that, buddy? You sure about it? You're coming for Jordy, just carve, Rob. Speechless, buddy. Speechless. Okay, so, yep, tap it on the mic. Mic check. Mic's still working. Let's give you the wider view here. I'm not staying down here for too long today. Wow. <laughs> but it, all this, you can see the wood that was washed up in the winter is already weathering. For example, here's a nice piece of cedar. The spirit whale. Okay, so uh, I had a uh, challenge a long time ago, a few years back, I did a spirit fish. I think I was the one that held that challenge. Discard Rob did one. Ben's studio on the lake did one. I got to say that mine kicked butt on theirs. Of course, it's like they'll say that theirs kicked butt on mine, but um, you know. You just got to keep on being better at everything you do, right? You got to keep looking out for number one. What do we got here? We got a little knot. Got a little stubby knot. Where is the log that I carved? There it is. Right in front of me. So there is lots of... Yeah, I appreciate everybody um, responding to my post when I make a post asking a question. People's opinions. In the community section, I said, uh, can I still keep making the... Uh, 
can I keep making the Jordy Does videos? Is it fine with you guys, basically? And everybody said, yeah, keep doing it. So that's awesome. So here's Live Life. There it is. Just car Rob. Got to live your life, buddy. So the ferry just unloaded. Anyway, it's not that you guys care. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the piece I'm looking for today. Here's a piece of perfect piece for a wood spirit. This is a nice piece. Look at this nice bluff. Well, it's nice hair. Nice old cedar log, half a log. It was rotten in the middle, so but it's all broken down here. But good good luck getting it off this beach. You know, these are always good to find and take and put in your yard too. Uh, the old log boom pieces. They got the hole in them. I got one in my yard. Yeah, it does not take too long for the wood to get gray and look like it's not very good. But behold, it's like a treasure hunt when you get, take a piece of wood home, cutting into it. Oh, I forgot that axe. Uh, Tyler, there's another garbage piece of junk. Rude people. My buddy Tyler that, uh, that I'm doing that chair for, Wally, he gave me an axe to bring beach home and then... He says, you never see me using the ox when I'm beachcombing. It's like, because Tyler, I always forget it. That's why, buddy. Not that I don't want to bring it, because it's good to chip away the wood and see what type of wood you're, you're using. Here's a little piece of cottonwood bark. So here's a piece of, I can smell this. Hey, maybe there's a, I can smell this kerosene oil log. No. Don't carve this wood. Kerosene oil. Pigs. Stuff floats into. So I don't think I'm going to find what I'm looking for today. Some insulation. Probably just float it in. I like to put it up here. Pull the stuff up there. So it doesn't float away again. There's another kerosene oil log. I think I'm going to have to wait for good old Ben's uh, rules for the challenge. Because, well, he's probably not even going to have rules. He's just going to say carve a whale. Maybe he has to have a mustache. He has to have a beard. I don't know what his interpretation of spirit whale is. But here's some pimply wood kind of like burly here's a nice piece of uh, cedar right in there old cedar here's a knot thing I'm not the biggest fan of curving these things. This one. This one I would make the face looking right. So like where are my fingers tapping? That would all be hair blowing back.
there's a little piece of cedar. How do I know what cedar you ask? Well, the bark's still on it. The more beach combing that you do, the more that you're going to know. Now, this is something I'm kind of, you know, I'm not giving any hints what I'm going to do for the spirit, spirit will challenge. No hints at all. People will, somebody will maybe use my idea and beat me because it's on. It's on. I'm going for number one. I'm going for the win. I'm going for the win, Jess Carr Rob. I'm going for the win. I hate to tell you. I'm going for the win. You're going to lose, so you might as well not even enter. So, yeah, I don't know. Nothing. Uh, oh, here's a nice little piece of cedar. Ah. There's a piece of cottonwood bark. It's not a bad piece, actually. Very curvable. I got enough. I think. I just think. I'm going to end this here. This is a nice little log, nice and clean. But when you get wood like this from the beach, I think it's nice and clean. There's no sand, but inside these cracks, oh, there's sand in there, all right. There's sand in there, all right. I still got to find another nice root piece to curve one of my multi-face creature things, but I haven't found something like that. I need to find an old rotten root piece. See, this, this would be a piece of... Uh, root skin so if you took that home and sanded it it would be super pretty see all the kind of looks like brains but um i got no use for this looks like a little face right there see the eye little mouth but it's too thin and it's um i just i just have no use for it yeah, I think I'm going to end this here, everybody. There's a piece of plywood. Somebody needs a piece of plywood. Um, I'm going to go to Walmart and see how much those, like, uh, those, like, uh, yards. There's a nice piece of bark up here. Those, see how much those yard swings cost? Because when I'm done chainsaw carving, I just want to sit in my front yard by the little waterfall I got and um, ch relax. Well, that's a nice piece. Very curvable. Don't need it. I did see a piece down here I want to go. But I think uh, those chairs are pretty expensive. You know, it's like you got like a metal frame and you can sit in the chair and it's like kind of you're floating. I just thought I want to get a nice chair. But I was, I was looking at this piece. Those are different kinds of birds. Let's see this. Well, where was I looking? I don't even know what I was looking at anymore. I'm getting pretty tired. So I'm going to start walking back. If I see anything neat, I'll uh, stop and show you. Okay. Uh-oh.
You guys see it? Surprise it's not beaking. There's an oyster digger, whatever they're called. I think it's actually sitting on its nest because it's just sitting there and I don't want to disturb it. That's okay. Well, this guy does not look happy. Maybe it's not feeling well. You okay? Gonna spray the orange eyes. You all right? I think it's not uh, feeling well. Come here. Are you okay? Let's hang out a bit. I'll be your friend. Come here. Okay. Guess you don't want to be friends. That's just uh, resting, maybe. It's injured. Might not be injured. But I'll leave it be. Yeah, so I'll uh, find something. Maybe. But uh, that's going to be it for this. This this wood here has super nice bark. If the bark is actually kind of metallic. I don't know if this is grapes, uh, a cherry tree. But you can see how the bark's metallic. Look at it shining. Pretty neat, eh? I think it might be cherry. I'm not too sure. Hope that little bird's going to be okay. Yeah, you know what, everybody? I think I'm going to call it on this one. Um, I think this will be Saturday's or Sunday's video. So let's just say, no, I'll edit it tonight. And say, um, happy Saturday, everybody. I hope you're doing good and getting out for the summertime. Enjoying the weather. Being with your friends and family. It's important. Um... Just carve, Rob. I'm coming for you, buddy. I'm coming for you. Don't shit your pants because I'm coming for you. And when you see me there at your door, you're going to shit your pants. You're going to be like, oh, shit, Jordy's here. I'm speechless. But before Rob can even leave comments here saying I'm not afraid of you, Jordy. I got air guns, I got rifles, I got semi-automatic machine guns, I got fully automatic machine guns, I got rocket launchers, I got bulletproof vests, I got tanks, I got submarines. I'm still coming for you, Rob. I got a BB gun. I have a wreck. <laughs>